engine cooling system and overheating how to avoid uh, your engine running hot and overheating and the best ways to uh, monitor this um, if you're going to put a gauge in a lot of people there's this thing everybody says oil temperature oil temperature oil temperature on the VW but I want you to think about something where is the heat created in an engine in all engines once you think about this for a second all engines are the same as far as this goes it's not the cylinders it's the cylinder head so what you always need to monitor the most important thing is your cylinder head temperature so guys will tell you oil temperature oil temperature no cylinder head temperature is your number one if you're gonna put one gauge in your car I don't have any gauges I know how to listen to the engine I know what it sounds like so I've had one for so long um, so but if you're gonna put a gauge in your car put a cylinder head temperature gauge that'll tell you the most over number three so how does the cooling system work let me show you how it works okay cold air on the top of the engine hot air comes out the back so when you're driving down the road your cool air it comes from here goes down in here goes down into the fan behind the engine goes in through the engine and then out the back of the car now you see these right here next between your heater boxes there's these plates a lot of guys take them off because they think you don't need them well I have to tell you this plate right here is necessary if you don't have this then your engine uh, heat goes straight down and so if you're sitting somewhere idling it's not going out the back it's not going out the back of the car it's going straight down and it can go back up and then back into your engine compartment from underneath so having it go the right direction to the back of the car is very important um, so you have a lot of guys with J tubes I mean for race engines and stuff like that you just have to be aware because you're gonna have J tubes on your mufflers so you're gonna have not have these heater boxes and uh, then you then you can't really run these so you have to be aware that sitting and idling is very hard on your engine because of the potential that the air can go back up and find its way back in the hot air the other big mistake everybody makes on their VW I've seen tons of them and they make sh they this seal is gone okay this seal needs to be there and all along here you notice this tin doesn't have any holes okay but typically you'll have a hole here for one of the holes somewhere or here you have your heater tubes and guys will leave that open so if you have a car that has heater tubes let me show you on this other engine so if you have this set up here which is more typical um, either these hoses have to be there which this car doesn't even have heater boxes okay but these hoses I have these things capped right here there's a I'll show you they're capped but why do I put the hoses there why would I do that to cover this hole okay and see I have some foil tape over this hole to keep the air from not coming back up because that'll make the engine run hot um, all your holes they, this is when they talk about your engine compartment should be sealed up this is what they're talking about now let me show you a couple things that you can do that really won't hurt the engine um, if you have off okay a lot of guys will say no you have to have everything on um, I'm going to tell you guys some of the little things that I've learned over the years number one if you have a aftermarket um, uh, oil cooler a lot of guys say well I'll run an aftermarket over cooler and put it over the fan right here do not do that 
it will restrict your fan flow and actually run your engine hotter. So yeah, your oil will be cooler, but your, but your cylinder heads will be extra hot and you'll have pinging going on. You'll ruin your engine very quickly with one of those aftermarket. You know, those aftermarket uh, oil coolers right here. You, if you put it over your fan, that's a no-no, okay? You notice that I have all stock oil coolers on my engines. They work usually sufficiently. Um, the other thing you can do too is if you want to have your engine run a little bit cooler is this is a 1600 and this has a doghouse fan shroud. So if you look behind here, if you can see that, let me see if I can get a light on. Right here, this is a doghouse. It sticks out in the back. The oil cooler is in the back. Therefore, more air can go down to the cylinder heads. So it has a separate uh, doghouse door. And the fan actually has a higher capacity fan than the other fans. Um, they are a little bit noisier in the car. So um, keep that in mind. Um, yeah, there's not light. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, there we go. You can see the doghouse now. That's the doghouse in the back. It's not very pretty, but it's there. So, uh, a couple more things I want to tell you guys. So, do not put the oil cooler, aftermarket oil cooler, behind the engine. If you're going to put an oil cooler on, what you can do is take off this front tin piece right here. Okay? Remove that front tin if you have the diverters that take the air to the back of the car. If you don't have those, the, oil, the air is going to go back up when you're idling and it'll go back up into your engine and it'll make your engine run hot. When you're going down the road, it'll be fine because when you're going down the road, air is still going to travel from underneath the car, from the front of the car, go into the engine compartment, and then just as you're going, it's going to drive the air out the back. So, if as long as you understand the airflow of the engine, you can kind of engineer your own modifications if you want to do that. And then what you'd want to do is if you're going to put an aftermarket oil cooler in, you put it above the transmission to the side, not right above the transmission, but to the side a bit. And you can put a fan on it if you want. Um, we used to just run them without anything, and uh, that was usually fine for your engine oil, but that gave you more cylinder head cooling. Um, a lot of guys will tell you you have to put a fan on it, but we, we used to run them without that. And it went, actually, our engine oil cool, uh, temperature was lower on the road. If you sat idling, again, you had to keep a monitor on that. You re-engineered the car, and you need to make, monitor that re-engineering that you did to make sure that it's done right. Um, because the engineers that made this car are pretty smart guys. They, they figured out some pretty cool stuff, but they did some pretty stupid things, too. So let's take a look here at the uh, other things that I see wrong. Now these are all the stock modifications, okay? If you have a stock engine, if you have a modified engine, there you're going to have a lot more modifications you're going to have to do, like uh, doghouse. I'll have a separate video on just that uh, modified engine, so look out for that uh, video. Um, but this is a stock engine things to watch okay with today's fuel another thing that's really important is two couple different things here one is your timing should always be no more than 28 degrees advanced unless you have some special modified engine then you might have to have it more advanced than that like in my one of my buses has a really big cam and I have to run it at uh, almost 38 degrees because the compression is so low. Um, when I increase the compression to the right place, I'm going to have to run it at 28. Um, I might have to may go to 30 or something like that because it's, uh, I'm not sure the advance on the cam uh, requires more advan you know, advance on the distributor. So those are all things you have to re-engineer when you're doing uh, modifications. Just kind of giving you guys a heads up, an idea. Okay, one of the other things you need to do is make sure that you up your main jet so like it depends on the engine you have for this okay but your main jet the stock main jet on these was like I think a 115 
on the 1600. That is way too lean, way too lean for the alcohol in today's fuel. So you have to add, I mean, typically 125 to 135 is right in there where you need to have your main jet. So take your main jet out of your carburetor and make sure you up it. Um, and, and, you know, until you start to, uh, you'll, you'll start to feel the engine really kind of load up a little bit, then back it off a little bit from there. So those are all the types of things you have to do to make your engine run cool. The other thing on your engine that you need to change is make sure that this, this seal is there and in good shape uh, so that the hot air doesn't come in the back and go back into the car. Now, the one up at the front is not as important as the one back here. Okay, there's two different pieces, the one that goes in the back of the car and there's the one that goes over the front along with that engine tin up there. Um, if you were going to leave one of the pieces of engine tin off, that piece that goes along the front of the car, it would be the one to leave off because um, that will actually sometimes make your car run cooler because air will actually come in through the bottom and into the engine compartment when you're going down the road because again your airflow is from the cool air in the engine the air goes down and out the back if you have the diverter tin underneath your car that you should have all the tins important I mean the more sealed up you have this stuff like these are aftermarket tin right here this is a cheap aftermarket tin the original had a cover for around here and everything was completely sealed so little small air leaks like that um, don't really help your engine um, but and again this engine does not run hot at all um, this actually can run on regular gas because the compression is low and uh, jetting is right and it runs um, very very cool it doesn't run hot at all you can run it you know as long as i'm not the other thing people are doing uh, is the other thing you can do to overheat your engine is depending on the uh, gearing that's in your transmission, um, if you're running your engine at a very high RPM on the freeway, um, that will make it run hot also. Um, if you're running your engine too low of an RPM on the freeway, that will make your engine run hot because you don't have enough airflow. Um, the engine for some reason um, doesn't like to run at a really high RPM. So if you have an original so early car, okay, and you're driving the car 70, 75, um, and you have the original gearing in the transmission, then that's pushing it. It's too much for that, for that gearing, too many RPMs. Um, so this one would be, you have to know what your gearing is in your transmission and be able to monitor this. So like the original gearing on this car was a 437 gear, uh, main uh, 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 ring and pinion. So if you have a 412 ring and pinion, then maybe you could go 70 without a problem um, with that, without overheating the engine. So the main thing you need to do is listen to your engine when you're driving down the highway. Okay. And and, and you're driving down the highway, let's say you're going 70, and you're not sure if you, if you have the right gearing in it or not. You're going 70 for about 10 or 15 minutes. Slow down a little bit, and then floor it. If you hear the engine ping, the engine's running hot, slow down. Um, the other thing you can do is run premium fuel. All these, almost every VW should be running premium fuel, unless you've done something different, like what I've done with this engine. Um, this is a specially built engine that runs on regular gas. So, um, you know, that's the only way you can do that. It has to be really, really, really modified to do that. So, uh, you know, if, if, you know, and have the right size main jet, you know, you can up your main even more and then run, run regular gas, possibly if you have low compression on your engine, that's one of the ways you do it. So, but you'll use more of it. So if you're going to use more gas, you can use premium and you can get the same effect. So anyway, 
that's a couple of little tricks here. Um, you know, the other things uh, are basic knowledge, you know, about your engine belt being the right tent, you know, right tightness, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, just make sure your timing's done right. Make sure your points aren't closing. If you have points, you know, you might want to just up your distributor to one of the new electronic ones, like on this engine here, one of these here. The new Ampy ones, the new style, are supposed to be better. Um, the old ones aren't that great, um, but I don't know. It's still a crapshoot with Chinese parts. You, you don't know what you're going to get. You know, this car happened to have still good or German Bosch points in it, so I didn't want to go ahead and replace those points in the condenser. Um, the new Bosch ones aren't really German. I don't know what they are, but they're not the same as the old German ones with the letters, numbers stamped in them and everything. They don't look the same. So, uh, until those points are toast, um, I'm going to run points in that car and then when they go out, then I'll go ahead and probably put a, a one of these distributors in it. So anyway, a couple little heads up on overheating, keeping your engine running cool. Oh, one more thing I'm going to say. Um, what we used to do, let's say um, your engine, you're not sure, you know. One of the things I used to do was uh, I used to set my deck lid on the bumper when I was on the on the freeway. Now, in the city, that isn't going to be good because you're going to pick up the hot air and bring it back up, you know, sitting and idling. But on the freeway, it's, there's enough air movement going this way that actually helped make the engine run cooler. So, that's one of the things I used to do. I don't have to do that, you know, on this engine. Absolutely don't need to do that at all. This engine runs cool. That one runs a bit hot. It's because this... Um, <clears throat> I modified, again, modified the original tire size was 165.15s. I have something else on here. They're an inch shorter. So that little inch of a shorter tire makes it so I have to go a lower speed. So I have to go 60 in this car to keep it from overheating or running hot. It won't overheat at, at 65, but it runs very hot at 65. And if I go 70, it will overheat. So anytime you've modified your tire sizes, um, another thing, you know, you got to re-engineer everything when you do that. When you re-modify your tire sizes, <clears throat> you got to take your transmission out, have it rebuilt, have different gears put in it. So if you're going to go low pros and all that other stuff, you've got to re-engineer your car. You know, that's up to you. Now you've changed something. You change one little thing like that, now you got to change everything that go line up with that. So, um, to keep that in mind when you go to change your tire sizes, these are 195, 65, 15s. So, yeah, they don't, uh, they're an inch shorter than the stock tire. And definitely, um, because this one has 437 gears again, I didn't know. I thought it probably had a 412 in it. Um, but, you know, for you know, some reason, it still had the original tranny in it. Um, and uh, it's in great shape, so I don't want to do anything with it but if I was gonna drive this car on the highway a lot I would definitely change the tires to the 165 15s or even bigger that's another thing you can do to modify you can go to a larger size tire larger height tire and that will help you um, have your engine run cooler my sister's Baja bug had tall tires on it and 437 gears and uh, Man, that sucker runs so cool because also you had a Baja bug where it was the engine was just wide open into the air, which that helps. So anyway, that's basic things about engine cooling in your Volkswagen. A couple of heads up you can do to help you out.